operator you can uh, apply to a state uh, which is interchangeable i guess no no no, like no 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 I define cell part joint, and uh, I in the class I said how it is different. Anything which is yes, uh, a equal to a dagger is Hermitian. But if you want to uh, say, so you are not listening to the class. So I'll pay attention to those students who are listening. I said about range, domain. I said about you need to bring the web function. I wrote a definition of cell pad join in terms of uh, bracket notation in the class. Yes, sir, I know that. So, but I when know. I asked you that, you please tell me what I said in the class. But you, you, you never uh, said that, no? First, what uh, you have to learn what I have said. Then I said, then you go and study details about it. But the basic definition that Hermitian has nothing to do with any wave function. Hermitian, um, um, see, I have a matrix. I can say whether this matrix is Hermitian or not. So no wave function is required for that. But cell pad join means you have to bring wave function. And, and uh, that also I wrote in the class. Let me, let me write it again. Uh, let me uh, share my screen. <clears throat> See, uh, oh, just a moment. I my iPad is uh, okay. Okay, then I have to start uh, sharing my screen. Okay. Can you see her? Huh? See the screen, no? Okay. So I wrote that uh, phi q psi should be equal to uh, q phi psi. Are you familiar with bracket notation? This is supposed to learn with the other teacher. So that is why I didn't emphasize much on this. If you are familiar, this you can write in integration notation also. That that yeah. probably you did in your uh, uh, BSc classes. That uh, uh, no, I'm not familiar yes, with sir. bracket the notation. Inner product representation theory. Uh -huh. So this bracket notation, if you are not uh, familiar, I think your teacher will teach bracket notation in details. So this, after listening to that, this is the definition of self adjoint phi and psi has to be well defined. I also said in the class, so pay attention to each and every word of the my class. I said that Q is the operator, Q dagger is another operator. If they are equal, they are Hermitian. But these operators range and domain, which I am not going to define here. You have to learn in the linear range and domain of this operator has to be range and domain of this operator. Suppose this acts on some psi, this acts on some phi, so uh, cannot act on all psi, then its range may not be same. So range and domain in the linear vector space you have to understand first. Then you have to see this definition. Okay. So it is not very easy. All the quantum mechanics books, they use Hermitian. Hermitian is just a, uh, a equal to a dagger is Hermitian. No wave function, nothing. It can be valid for anything. But in quantum mechanics, this is the definition of self-adjoint. And if you want to learn details about it, you have to go to the vector space understanding. This relation you can write in integration form also. You don't need because in the BSc you have, for example, this phi uh, star psi is basically your phi psi. Okay. 
So this this is the correspondence of integration to. So I'm not going to teach, so I'm not going to pay at much uh, effort to those. So this is the definition of self-adjoint. See, I gave you example that you are saying momentum operator is uh, uh, Hermitian. Fine, this is Hermitian. You are saying it is self-adjoint. Then I find that e to the power kx, it is the eigenfunction of momentum operator. If you act momentum operator on this, you will get uh, k times uh, this operator. Um, I h cut I h cut ddx, so this will be kx. So this will be the eigenvalues. This is imaginary, but momentum operator cannot have imaginary. So this may not be uh, in this category when you put a self adjoint definition. So if you have this kind of phi or psi, then this will not be holding. Okay. Okay. Any other question? I suggest that every uh, after my lecture, at least you pay some attention to the lecture 10 minutes, 20 minutes, read this every day. After finishing, you you are making some notes maybe or whatever way you, your style. Then you read it. Bring your question before the next class. Every next class, I will ask you whether you have any doubts. So that is the best time to ask your doubt about the previous class. You can ask your doubt later also, but I uh, will be busy. I may not answer. So uh, this is the best way that whenever the next class, beginning of next class, you should ask your doubt. Any Anybody else has any doubt? But instead of that, you should pay more attention in the measurement theory, which I was teaching. Uh, and this is the concept on which you will get question in all of your exam, not a single great exam or net exam where there was no question based on that what I taught the measurement theory and this postulate. Every year there will be a question from this. And if you understand this, 30% of the problems you're getting in any competitive exam you're able to understand, you're able to solve. Let me tell you, when you have to find the make a measurement omega, you cannot find the value. You can only predict certain probability. For example, if this omega has say n number of eigenvalues and suppose corresponding eigenvectors are this, then probability of say um, omega 1 will be omega and, and, and the, if the um, psi is the state of the wave function. If the psi is the state of the system and you are going to measure a omega, so you have to find its complete set of eigenvalues and eigenfunction. Then you can find that this is will be omega 1 and act on psi. This is the probability of finding omega 1. Finding omega 2, what will be the probability? Probability will be just omega 2 corresponding eigenvector you have to use, inner product with the psi and then mod square and so on. Okay. And important thing is that after if you make a measurement and you find a value omega 1, I don't know which value will find. So after this, suppose your value is omega 1, then your wave function will be collapsed to omega 1. Suppose the result of your measurement is omega 2, then your wave function will be collapsed to omega 2. Now suppose you make a omega measurement, then you want to make a lambda measurement, another observable. First time I measure suppose angular momentum, next time I am measuring energy or momentum say. Now, now if they do not commute, suppose in first measurement I get omega 1. So my Initial state was psi. Now, after this measurement, state has changed to omega 1. Now, after the first measurement of omega, I want to measure a lambda. So, again, you have to find the lambda eigenvalues and its corresponding eigenvectors. Now, this is not an eigenfunction of lambda. 
it may be when they are commuting then it may have a common basis that i said but suppose it is not then any any wave function which is not a eigen function of a uh, operator then it can be written this omega 1 can be written in terms of complete set of this other wave function when it is a complete set it, this has to be complete set Today, after today, I will going to uh, next class, I will start the, your perturbation theory. This is fourth lecture and I will not spend much uh, um, uh, introduction. This, this, uh, these are not your part of your syllabus, but this is the fundamental concept of quantum mechanics, which you, without that, your perturbation theory or whatever you are learning is meaningless. So, any, any function, wave function, which is not an eigenfunction of the the observable you are measuring then what you have to do you can always write that eigen function in terms of a comp this is a complete set so i can write a complete set that you have learned fourier series transformation fourier series if you have a function it can be written in terms of a complete set of orthonormal function exactly same thing i am doing now if you want to measure lambda one or lambda then probability of getting your lambda 1 will be the C1 mod square. This you have to take this, this inner point. Let me write one more step. Lambda 1 omega 1, which is uh, lambda 1, so not I 1. Okay. So lambda 1, then omega 1 can be written in terms of this complete set Cn lambda sorry c n here sum over n i'm sorry sum, sum over n c n and that inner product now this has the uh, n equal to one to two uh, infinity if you have infinite set then then only only the first term will contribute because lambda this is a complete set lambda i lambda j is delta i j that means when i equal to j then only survive so i equal to one so this here only one will survive so this will give you a c1 and and this probability means mod square probability means mod square i'm forgetting so now if you want to measure a third operator say Say uh, uh, psi. Uh, not let me let me write. Say p p operator. Then I'll now now after this result is lambda one, then my wave function will be lambda one. After this measurement, so then lambda one has to be written in terms of uh, say d n uh, of uh, p n, eigen values of the p operator. So every time you have to write in a complete set and then you have to make a measurement. Okay. So any question about that? Now I'll consider one example from our Shankar book. Uh, this is a problem and that will um, give you some idea uh, how to solve problem. This is a very important problem and it will clarify a lot of issues. Do you have any question on this? But this is the fundamental Hello. thing. Quant huh. Tell me. Hello, sir. Sir, huh. uh, for this, first we have to make sure that those two operators must commute. Only then no, we can no, move forward. No, 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 no. Where, where you are using that? Uh, sir, because when collapse, just uh, like a probability measure, karte hai, fir uske baad apan angular momentum kuch bhi measure karna hai. Toh apan usko, uh, उस बेसिस की फॉर्म में लिखेंगे तो कम्यूट करना तो जरूरी होगा ना उन दोनों का तभी तो कंप्लीट सेट होगा नो 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 यू यू आर मिसिंग द पॉइंट लॉन्ट लिसनिंग एंड जो पहले सीखा है वो भूल जाओ क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स कुछ भी नहीं जानते हो तुम लोग दैट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज दैट आई सेड व्हेन लैम्डा एंड ओमेगा दे कम्यूट देन आई कैन फाइंड अ कॉमन आइगन बेसिस then it is possible 
possible to find a common eigenbasis. Means I can find say lambda and omega that common eigenbasis. I denote by this. That means when this acts on this, I I let me write. So this action I'll get a lambda i times omega i lambda i. When omega acts on this, then I'll get omega i times omega i lambda i. But when they are not co commuting, then I can any functions. Remember, remember this. This is a Fourier series. If you have learned, I am I am sure you are an undergraduate Fourier. Any function, any finite function. Let me write any finite function. Any finite function can be expanded. in terms of in terms of complete set complete set of orthonormal functions function eigen function whatever you write any function here you can measure them simultaneously without further expanding. But when they don't commute, then you need to here see after lambda measurement, it will be. So if I get a lambda measurement, if I get lambda one, my wave function will be omega i lambda one. But it is still a eigen function of omega because omega is there. It is a common eigen basis. OK, so you can find the on the same state omega eigenvalues also. That is the meaning of simultaneous measurement. But here, here what I am saying when they do not commute. So this what you said is completely wrong. Try to understand. Any other question? <clears throat> Anybody has any other doubt? And, and what I said that there is not a single ex exam, net, get, jest. There is no question from this concept. Every year, at least one question will be there from this concept. If you understand this concept clearly, you can solve all these problems. But you have to understand clearly and apply clearly. You have to know uh, how to apply it. So let me let me uh, solve a problem from R. Shankar book. It is exercise problem. It is not a solve problem. So pay attention and it illustrate all the uh, concept I am saying. It says they consider the following operators. So let me explain the problem first. Consider the uh, following operators. L x is 1 over root 2 a matrix 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 yeah l y is again 1 over root 2 0 minus i 0 i 0 minus i 0 i 0 okay and l y l z L Z is one zero 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 minus one. Okay. So this is given. Consider the following operators in a particular Hilbert space. It is quantum mechanics. So don't don't bother their angular momentum. Just a just a three matrix operator is given. They are given for a angular momentum, but angular, suppose in uh, Arshankar book, this is in fourth chapter, you do not know much about quantum mechanics of angular momentum. So, you do not have to bother about angular momentum. Keep that from your mind. Just there are some operator, 3 cross 3 matrix. First question is that, what are the possible values one can obtain? So, if you measure LZ, so if you measure 
LZ, what are the possible outcomes? Okay, so what do you do? So this is first part of the question and that's very simple. This is given, three operators are given. Now suppose if you measure the th third one, LZ, this is this, uh, this correspond to uh, this operator. So what are the possible values you can get? Ha, Siddharth, batao. It's one, zero, minus one. Ha? One, zero or minus one. One, zero and minus one. How you get this? So because uh, in a diagonal matrix, the eigenvalues are along the diagonal. Ha, huh. but uh, that is fine. But but remember what I taught you, you have to think in that way. Suppose I, I, I ask that uh, what will be the, if I make a measurement of LX, then what will give, what the, what the possible outcome? So I'll have to find the eigenvalues and eigenvalues. Eigenvalues. First. So first thing at that any operator, if I make the measurement of the observable corresponding to that operator, then its possible outcome are the eigenvalues of that operator. But fortunately, this is this operator is given in a diagonal form. It is a diagonal matrix, so its diagonal elements are the outcome. So correct what he said is completely correct. The possible outcome of the measurement will be either 1 or 0 or minus 1. So these operators, what are the, Siddharth, what are the eigenvectors of this operator? Sir, Either i, j, eigen... n, k. Huh? i, j, n, k. Matlab, Where no, i, j comes? Where from i, j comes? You oh, have to no, find no, a... Sorry, you yeah, have to find a wave function for this. How? I, I said eigenvector. So any operator yes, you yes. want to measure, you have to find its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So what are the eigenvectors? Anybody? This is a very simple question. It's a column. Column of the... Tell me oh, the eigenvectors. Yes, so a one... diagonal matrix eigenvector you cannot tell. This is, this is uh, very simple. This is a diagonal matrix. So eigenvectors will be 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. 0, 0, 1. You just multiply this, take this 1, so 1 will give you this eigenvalues. Second position 1 means it will give you the 0 eigenvalues. Third position 1 means it will give the minus 1 eigenvalues. So these are its eigenvalues. So let me write uh, LZ1 is this. This is your LZ2 and this is your LZ3. These are the three eigenvectors. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now second question. So first question is that you have to uh, any operators when you measure that means you have to find its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Eigenvalues will give you the uh, and what is the probability then you have to calculate. Suppose the uh, suppose the if, uh, state of the system is psi. Then, then probability of getting LJ equal to plus one will be the uh, this this is when you write a column it is generally ket so ket ket means column so bra this is called bra this bra means it is row so probability of LJ will be row this is a real so one zero zero times the psi and 1 0 0 if if thus if the system at psi i am giving the system is at state psi wave function is given for that now i am measuring the lz operate obs observable corresponding to lz operator i found that it can have three eigenvalues 1 minus 1 probability of getting 1 will be this mod square Similarly, probability of LJ equal to 0 will be 0, 1, 0, then this psi, psi, uh, what is the state, 
it can be a matrix 0 1 0 mod square the in this question they have not asked but if you it is given psi then okay now i'm coming to the second part second part of this problem um, take the state in which lj equal to 1 now it is saying take the state lj equal to 1 so when i take lj equal to 1 my wave function now change to the lj equal to 1 wave function that means my wave function is 1 0 0 take the state lj equal to 1 that means the because after the measurement this wave function will be this wave function okay now now question listen to the question in this state in this state so this is not given but you have to understand this in this state find expectation value of lx expectation value of lx square and delta lx this kind of measurement this kind of question you will get very frequently in many exams no, how will do that? Anybody else? <clears throat> this problem you have done. Suppose I want to find the expectation value of a operator, say A, and the wave function is given psi, then you all know that this is a psi A psi, or in integration notation, psi star A psi. Uh, I didn't get your uh, um, uh, Susan Mondal. Who, who, what do you want to say? This is the definition of expectation value in this notation, bracket notation in this integration form. Saurab, uh, no, Susan Mondal, what, what was your comment? I don't know. So he cannot listen or I don't know. Okay, so so now I know my state. My state is 1, 0, 0. So from here I can find. But but even that, okay, so you can you can find uh, so if you find your LX expectation in this state, so you will have a 1, 0, 0. LX is now 1 over root 2. Uh, 0, uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, no, no, I wrote wrong, 0, 1, 0, uh, just, just let me, what I wrote my L, uh, 0, 1, 0, no, this is the mistake, 0, 1, 0, times 1, 0, 0. So if you do this matrix multiplication, you will get the value and you will find that this is 0. <clears throat> similarly, similarly, uh, you can find uh, Okay. Okay. Any question on this? Similarly, you can find your uh, LX square. So you make this LX is given LX square. You can find. So you'll find this corresponding matrix, and you can find this is one zero zero. Then that matrix LX square you'll write. Then you'll have one zero zero. So so this will be zero, but this will you'll get half. You just verify yourself. First, multiply the square of this matrix, and then put this. And delta Lx, this this I have not mentioned yet, but delta x you are familiar is root over of uh, Lx square minus Lx expectation square. So they can you know this value, this value, so you can calculate this. So second part of this question is, okay, 
Now, most important part is the third part. Third part of the question. Let me let me tell you what is the question. Find the normalize. Find the normalized eigenstates. and eigenvalues of lx in the in the lz basis okay so anybody has any suggestion <clears throat> This is this is important. So LZ basis, of course, here LZ is basis because LZ is diagonal. So it LZ basis means LZ basis means your basis vectors are 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. LZ basis, LZ in the, these are the LZ eigen vectors. So LZ basis means your eigen vectors is this. And then you have to find the eigenvalues of Lx in the Lz basis. Any, any, anybody has any answer? Huh? But how? So we can, <coughs> so we can first find the eigenvectors of Lx and eigenvalues of Lx. How you find we that? Take, sir, with the formula that we use, Ax minus, uh, A minus lambda x for us. Uh, okay, diagonalize. Diagonal, you diagonalize. So you uh, have to... Tuhin Mahanti 1 over root 3 is no, no, no. No, Tuhin, it is not 1 over root 3. Okay, sir. How will get 1 over if you have a A, B, C uh, vector, eigen vector, then it's. Uh, is a square plus b square plus c square. So you, I don't know why, but from where you get all these things, uh, wrong concept. So here a is one, b is zero, c is zero. So I get constant is one. Normalization constant for all these three states are one. Okay. Okay. So what you have to do, you have to first. Suppose you have to you have to diagonalize this Lx. So you can find say Lx1, Lx2. Uh, there are three eigenvalues you'll get Lx3. You will get three eigenvectors Lx1, Lx2, and Lx3. Okay. So those will be the because already given that um, in this formulation, LX, LZ is already given diagonalized. So we are already in the LZ basis. So LZ basis we have. So in this LZ basis, these are the eigenvectors. These are the eigenvalues. How you'll find? You just uh, uh, find the eigenvalues and eigenfunction of this matrix, LX matrix. So this is the third part. But student will be confused. So let me let me write the answer because in fourth part we'll need the answer. So I, I did myself. So let me let me see. So again you can find that your Lx 
will be plus 1, Lx1 say, Lx2 will be 0, Lx3 will be minus 1. Again, you find these eigenvalues, but eigenvectors, these eigenvectors, Lx1 eigenvectors, let me, let me write it from, I, I uh, calculate. Um, yeah, or maybe uh, I can write this answer is given in this book. So, yeah, Lx equal to 1, that eigenvalues you will get uh, half. 1 over root 2 half. Lx2 eigenvectors you will get for 0. This is for 0. Minus 1 over root 2, 0 plus 1 over root 2, plus 1 over root 2. Please verify that. and Lx3 that corresponding to this eigenvalues, minus 1 eigenvalues, you will get half minus 1 over root 2 and then half. These are the eigenvectors you'll get. This is very simple to get, but you understand the concept. Eigenvalues, eigenvectors of a 3 cross 3 matrix you have to find, but you will be confused when it is written that in the LZ basis. Okay, because the next question is related to that. So this, the, this is LZ basis because it is already LZ is diagonalized. If it is only the Lx basis, so Lx basis means then Lx will be diagonalized, the eigenvalues will be the outcome and the eigenvectors will be 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. If the basis is Lx, okay, I think I got, uh, I gave you enough information. Now fourth part, I should stop 10 minutes before because uh, I want to finish something else then uh, because next class onwards I'll start perturbation. Now, now fourth question. If the particle is Lz equal to minus one state, that means I measure Lz, I get minus one value. That means the state of the system, state of the system will be half 1 over root 2 minus uh, root 2 half. This this is the eigenvector corresponding to Lz equal to. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. The state of the, I'm sorry. Lz equal to 1. So state of the system uh, will be, state of the system will be 0, 0, 1. Great. Lz equal to minus 1. So not this one. Lz equal to minus 1 means this state. So state of this system, so my psi in this case, psi is now 0, 0, 1. Now question, listen to the question. And Lx is measured. So this is given and Lx is measured. What are the possible outcome and their probabilities? So Lx is measured. So what are the possible With, with what probabilities? This you have to find. Just tell me. So it is very simple, right? So Lx, I know that they major, what are the possible, but we already know Lx possible outcome. Lx outcome are 1, 0 and minus 1. This is diagonalizing Lx we get. So probability of Lx equal to 1 will be the Lx equal to 1 state inner product with this state Lz equal to Lz3, Lz, this is Lz3 in my third eigenvalues minus 1. So this, this is, this you have to calculate. Lx1, what is your Lx1? Lx1 is this state. So your answer will be 1 half, 1 over root 2, half, this is Lx equal to 1, this state, half, 1 over root 2, but now this is in the bra, 
so it will be rho and then so this matrix multiplied by lx is 0 0 1 so answer will be half if you multiply you'll get half oh probability will be mod square so it will be half into half so one fourth similarly you can find the probability of lx equal to zero so zero means you have to take the zero state zero state l2 this this state so so it will be minus one over root two zero one over root two and then zero zero one okay so mod square so probability will be half one over root two square Similarly, probability of Lx equal to minus 1 will be the third state, this state and this state. Okay. So, this is the fourth. Now, the most important part is the fifth part. After that, I will stop here. Then I will go to uh, this. Even I will not complete this. You, you do yourself. A state is given. A state of the system half half and 1 over root 2. This is given. This is not a eigenstate of any of the things, but it is some in the LZ basis, but basis is LZ. We are all considering that LZ basis. Basis means that that operator is diagonalized. If LZ square is measured, now, now question is that LZ square is measured. And the result is Lz square result is found plus 1. What is the state? After measurement. And how probable and probability, etc. Now, important thing that concept of degenerate I told you, LZ is degenerate. See, LX, LZ values are plus 1, minus 1, and 0. But for this value, LZ square value will be plus 1. For this also, LZ square value will also be plus 1. So, this will be degenerate state, these two states. So, what are the possible values of Lz square that you can find? Lz square will be plus 1 or 0. There is no minus 1 because it is Lz square now. This also you can find you, um, uh, if, if, you, if you find your Lz square, just matrix multiplication, Lz into Lz, you will find 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. That means two eigenvalues are same, one and one, and one of them will be zero. So here the degeneracy will come, and I told you the degeneracy. So let let you. So everybody has the Arshankar book. So fifth part, fifth part is your uh, home assignment, if you can, because I have to cover certain things. Okay, sixth part is also there, but that is not so important right now for you. So, do this exercise and learn this exercise. Do this problem yourself again and understand each and every step. Then you will be able to learn quantum mechanics. Otherwise, you will not be able to learn. Okay. Now, now because in from next class, I will start perturbation because uh, uh, we cannot spend much on that basic quantum mechanics. So, what you have learned so far that I am going to tell you. So, what quantum mechanics you learned or what quantum mechanics... Uh, uh, learning is needed. That that we are going to do. So first is that where classical physics fails. This you have learned black body radiation, specific heat, photoelectric effect, etc. Second thing is the operators. Operators like uh, have you have you, have you proved the time reversal operator has. Uh, uh, is antilinear, so linear Hermitian operators, their properties, properties, 
eigen values eigen functions operators how to find this you should learn i am assuming that you have learned solution of solution of simple 1d problem that means box uh, well uh, then simple harmonic oscillator and also i am assuming hydrogen atom this those who have not there are few students who have not done hydrogen atom please do yourself because when i teach you perturbation theory we will take lot of example from hydrogen atom harmonic oscillator etc so hydrogen atom knowledge is needed at least how to find eigen values and eigen functions of hydrogen atom this is of course 3d problem this is of course 3d problem not a, so simple 1d problem like box well harmonic oscillator and 3d problem of harmonic uh, hydrogen atom you i expect you to learn okay so basically you need the eigen values eigen function how to calculate this fourth i need uh, that probability density current density how uh, and continuity equation uh, del rho del t plus divergence j equal to 0 so this knowledge needed fifth is the uncertainty relation okay that delta x delta p x get or equal to h cut by 2 not only that any operator a b commutator is i a suppose suppose then uncertainty of their measurement delta a delta b get or equal to a by 2 so any operator not only x and p x that means if their commutator is not zero they cannot be they cannot have a common basis complete common uh, all the basis vectors common then if they don't have then you cannot measure them simultaneously so you want to measure more precisely a you have to sacrifice the measurement of b or if you want to measure the b more precisely you have to sacrifice this this is why there is this is called there is no there is no concept of concept of path in quantum mechanics this try to learn this there is no concept you cannot say that path of a particle in the box or path of a uh, harmonic oscillator in quantum mechanics there is no concept path is not a concept at all in quantum mechanics this form of quantum mechanics there is of course another form of quantum mechanics which is called path integral formulation there path of course there is a different formulation okay now next thing is that then expectation value calculation of uh, delta x delta p x or or uh, this uncertainties and uh, expectation values this i am expecting that you are familiar with this most important thing which you have not pay much attention but now you should pay attention important experiment for example uh, double slit experiment uh, photoelectric experiment effect experiment frank hurge stan garlick deviation germer these experiment and what are the these experiment please learn and their prediction so up to this i am expecting that you should know all these things now now in next class we'll start from how to calculate see idea is that only few problems only few problems you can solve analytically and and major of the problems you cannot solve analytically so we need approximate methods we'll find a approximate solution i cannot find the exact solution 
solve analytically and exact solution you can find exact solution okay but most of the cases you will not find that exact solution so you need approximate solution and this how to find approximate solution is the topic of my teaching in this semester mainly for example i'll give you an answer you have solved a box problem 0 to l yes, very good you know how to find i n energy eigen values psi n and you know the e n now i said okay this this is at the zero potential and this is at the infinity potential so i said okay uh, let us have a box of this this is this 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 bottom is not flat bottom is has some small potential this side and this side how you'll find that this box has a hump here small hump how you'll find that this line is not starting at zero but this line suppose start at some epsilon height How will find that? You have uh, you have understood your uh, you have understood your uh, box problem. But if I modify it little bit, you will not able to solve. And realistic situation, you will not have the box. Whatever potential system you found, there will be some uneven things. You you have a barrier uh, barrier problem. You have uh, this kind of barrier particle comes how to solve this now now i said okay uh, you have a barrier uh, which is like this this is not flat but this kind of thing but or more simply more simply i write a barrier say say kind of this very uh, it is a parabolic type inclination how you solve this you cannot solve analytically you have to depend on approximate methods and i'm going to teach you few approximate method one first is the perturbation second is the variational okay uh, perturbation there are many things uh, time independent time dependent then uh, degenerate, non-degenerate, many cases it is a big topic. Variational principle is a small topic. There is another method which is called WKB. So this uh, Dr. Shewach will teach. Okay, this, this WKB method will, will be taught by him. So I'll teach this and then I'll come to the scattering. So in my uh, part, then, then there will be... Uh, scattering okay so i'll stop here unless you have any question uh problem number is 4.2 4.2 uh it is uh, in some volume 129 page let me write um, huh. problem uh, 4.2.1 this is the problem number and page this this particular edition i don't know which edition 129 this is the problem this is exercise problem it's not a solve problem i'll i'll give you a lot of problem set later now not now but now the introductory class is over uh, if you want something in the introductory level apart from our syllabus you we can discuss in some other class tutorial class or later but but uh, uh, now we have to start your syllabus because your semester has to be closed in by uh, April sometimes, right? I don't know April end or middle, that I don't know. But uh, so I have to finish your syllabus. So now we'll go to your syllabus from next class. Next class will be as it is on Saturday, whether it is a holiday or not, I will not bother. But 
every Saturday and Monday will take class until after sometimes Dr. Sewach will stop taking in Tuesday class. Then when uh, in the middle of February, some 20 February or something. So after 20 February, I'll take Monday, Tuesday class. Okay. So any other question? Otherwise, I'll stop. It is exactly 12 and I'll stop. This is the beginning Hello, of huh, beginning of my lecture. Please, if you have some uh, difficulties in listening me, difficulties in understanding me, or you want me to change my style of teaching, everything is possible, but you have to give me feedback. It is your class, you have to learn. Yes, tell me, Siddharth. Uh, sir, where can I find material on time reversal operator? <laughs> it is not in, it is not available in the books and all. Uh, you send the, some solution now that you cannot understand the last part. Who wrote? You wrote. Yes, yeah, sir. That was for the uh, operator. One. Uh, that was for commutator. The commutator that you gave. Oh, no, no, commutator uh, or time time diversal? No, no. So this uh, okay, okay. So I don't. Somebody else wrote. But now no, probably no, sir, not... that that was sent by me. Huh. No, the, no. So but it was some so other problem. Do, so men do send this time reversal. Uh -huh. You said that operator that uh, I missed somewhere, but you send it again. And Somendu send this, but wh what is the last part? I'm not getting from your uh, Somendu. So it, time reversal eigenvalues, I can't understand. So what should I do? Parity eigenvalues, Somendu, you can understand. how. What are the eigenvalues of parity operator? Parity, parity means it change. Uh, so X plus minus, minus one. X. Plus minus. How you get it? Can you prove yes, sir, yes. that it's... Huh, tell me, I'm writing here. Just whatever you will tell, I'll write. Other people, if you have a class, you can leave. Formal class is over, but some of question I'm answering. If they want to leave, they can leave. Otherwise, they can stay also. So, Mendo, how you find the parity has the plus minus? So I can say, so we have to apply parity operator again on this. Uh, okay, okay, very minus good. Sir. So... Huh. So you operate twice, then you will get psi or minus x minus x psi x. So you get p square eigenvalues, p square operator has eigenvalues plus 1. So p operator eigenvalues is plus minus 1. What is the eigenfunction? Suppose p equal to plus 1, what is the eigenfunction? Or p equal to minus 1, what is the eigenfunction? Just tell me. See, that is the point I am emphasizing from the day one. Whatever you have learned, you have learned superficially. You with depth. Now you, you can say correctly the eigenvalues. You cannot say eigenfunction. Where the eigenfunction will be psi x plus psi of minus x by 2. By 2 is normalized if you give one. This is the eigenfunction for parity plus 1. Eigen function parity minus 1 will be psi x minus psi of minus x. Suppose I write by 2. You just now op act parity. See, parity act on some phi. So suppose this is phi plus and suppose this is phi minus. Phi, phi plus will give you plus 1 phi plus. You can check yourself. Similarly, parity acting on phi minus will give you minus phi minus. Then only it is eigenvalues minus 1 plus 1. No? So it has to be psi x plus psi minus x. Now time reversal operator try in the same fashion. But keep in mind. Time reversal also keep in mind. That t is anti-linear. So how we know that t is anti-linear? That I have asked you to prove. That I'm. Uh, if most of the student is taught in the uh, undergraduate. There are many ways. So first you can take the Schrodinger equation. Uh, Schrodinger equation is t invariant, and try to find Schrodinger equation is time reversal. Write a time dependent Schrodinger equation. Take a time reversal of Schrodinger equation. And from there, if it is invariant, then you can find that i go, has to go to minus i under time reversal then. But this is one way. Second way that 
that is the fundamental commutation relation x p x. This you tried, I think, Samendra. That uh, is I. Yes, sir. So if you so if you take a time reversal of x p x both side. So this side is a number. So I h cut t t inverse. Now under time reversal x will not change, but p x will change. P has time. So left hand side will have a minus sign. Right hand side is a number, pure number. How can it have a minus sign? But this equation has to be preserved under time reversal. Under parity, time reversal, those symmetries you have to be the same equation. This is fundamental equation in quantum mechanics. So this only possible thing is that I going to minus I. And I going to a minus I means complex conjugation. Complex conjugation happens means it is antilinear that I defined other day. T act on A psi 1 plus B psi 2 will be A star because when T pass through A, it will be complex conjugate. I going to minus A. So, of T of psi 1 plus B star T of psi 2. So, now time reversal operator is antilinear. So, start with the psi xt. Suppose some eigenvalues A of x minus T, right? But it is star, it is it has to be star because uh, time reversal is antilinear. Now you take a again t like parity and see what will happen. And the same way you did parity, you can find the eigenvalues of. But you have to remember time reversal is antilinear operator. When it acts on, it makes the numbers complex conjugate, wave function complex conjugate that you have to. So, so then you will be able to find. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, Siddharth, tell me quickly, I will leave this class now. Sir, I have sent you the commutator relation cos px and sin x again. Please check it. Okay, okay, I will check. <clears throat>